is a bit of a rarity. It's a Sexton Blake story actually on a 12 inch 78 uh, HMV record and it stars the uh, the early uh, uh, talkies Sherlock Holmes, Arthur Wantner, who um, although he was a little bit old playing Sherlock Holmes actually bore quite a resemblance to those uh, original uh, drawings of Sherlock Holmes by Sidney Paget. Murder on the Portsmouth Road. It's uh, the murder on the Portsmouth Road. It's a small, you know, sort of five-minute drama on uh, both sides of this 12-inch shellac uh, record, and it's starring the uh, the famous uh, Arthur Wantner and Company. Arthur Wantner was famous for his portrayal of Sherlock Holmes, one of the early portrayals of Sherlock Holmes in the Sound Movies. And uh, although a little bit old for the part, he actually bore quite a resemblance to those uh, original drawings by Sidney Paget of Sherlock Holmes. So it's nice to have him doing a, a detective drama on record. And it's uh, amazing how you can fit a little drama into five minutes on, on, on one of these records. So, The Murder on the Portsmouth Road. Just talking in English. Day, but... Who's that? What do you want? 
Open the door, sis. Something set. Hey, why are you coming? Where's John? A friend your husband has met in an accident. An accident? It wasn't no accident. He was deliberately shot. Shot? Hey. Oh, my God, so you did, Dr. Rowe. Sis! What do you mean? Look out, man. She's big. Part two of this uh, Sexton Blake mystery, Murder on the Portsmouth Road, starring the great Arthur Wapner, one of the early talkies uh, Sherlock Holmes portrayers. Feeling better now, Mrs. Dent? Yes, thank you. Is that flat place blue bottle and only had the sense to keep his mouth shut? She'd never have touched a dummy. Quiet, go on. Mrs. Dent, when you heard the news of your husband's death, you accused your brother of the crime. Why? I didn't know what I was saying. But you must have had some reason. What was it? I'll tell you what it was. Leave her alone, dear. I heard her out tonight with Day, and I told him if he didn't treat her better than what he'd been doing, I'd croak him. Oh, for God's And I meant it, too. Look at her arms, all cut and broom. That was Day's work. The perishing hand. It's lucky for him somebody fired that shot. I wouldn't have killed him to clean. You're doing your best to put a rope round your own neck, Cora. Billy Day, why did your husband go out so late on a night like this? He said he'd got to meet someone on business. Who? He didn't tell me. He never spoke about the people he knew. Had he any enemies? Anyone who might have benefited by or desired his death? I don't know of anyone. You're only wasting time, sir. It's plain enough who killed him. You mean Cora? Yes, sir. He had the opportunity and the motive. Then I must have used a blinking pea shooter. Because I ain't got a gun and never had one. It's only your word for that. You search me. That wouldn't prove anything. You probably threw the weapon away after you fired the shot. Blimey. There ain't no convincing some people. Well, I believe the bloke was done it come and give himself up. You still think it was me. Paula, were you here when Dave went out? Yes. And you left how long after? About ten minutes. So there would be ample time for him to have met somebody before you left the house. Yes. Then I think we'll go back to the scene of the crime. You better wait here, Mrs. Day. We can't be long. What are you expecting to find, sir? They went out to meet one. Unless someone turned up, there should be traces of his footprints in the wet ground by the body. If they're neither callers nor mine, or yours, constable, then there was another person present. And that person, in all probability, was the murderer. I don't think you'll find any traces of him, sir. Well, we can, but look. Figure, give me your thoughts. Thanks. Now, here's my footprint, easily distinguishable, and here are several callers. This is obviously the dead man. And these? Ah, uh, yes, these are yours, Constable. Did you pass this way before the murder? No, sir. Ah, yours? Mine, of course. One or two speakers, but no other. I told you there wouldn't be, sir. Well, it certainly seems fairly concluded. This fellow fell where he was shot with a pistol that fired less than a yard away, and the only footprints are mine, Tinker's, yours, and Cor. Oh, I never did it, Captain. Oh, I never did it. Squat me, on Just a moment. This is rather curious. Tinker, help me move the body. Ah, what have you found, I found out who killed John Day. Who? You did. It's a lie. It's the truth. You said you hadn't been round this way before the murder and that you hadn't moved the body. Neither had I. And how is it that there are three clear impressions of your footprints under the dead man? I know nothing about it. I'm so good denying it, Constable. The evidence is too strong against you. Oh, well, I suppose I'd better make a clean breast of it. I did kill him. He's been blackmailing me for years. Every penny I could rake together went into Dave's pocket. He arranged to meet me tonight on the beach for a further installment. And I determined to put an end to it. I shot him with this. He's going to... My God! He's killed himself. Perhaps it was better that way. Tinker, take a car and find the nearest police station. When you come back, there's somebody to take charge here. We'll continue our journey to Vegas. wasn't it? If only all criminals would shoot themselves, it would save a lot of uh, court and police time, wouldn't it? And a lot of public expenditure. <laughs> Thanks for watching.